My name's Sarah Huntley. I'm currently 27. And to be quite honest, I've done MDMA more times than I can count at this point, but I would say probably between maybe 30 and 50 times. So the first time I did MDMA um, was back in 2003. At the time I was 15 and uh, I lived in my hometown in Northern California. And um, I don't know if my friends had really given me an adequate idea of what the experience would be like. Um, I, my first experience wasn't at a club or a rave or anything like that. It was actually with my hometown friends just driving around. And um, I was really impressed and surprised just by the level of emotional um, depth and bonding and compassion and just empathy that bubbled out of me, even at you know a really young age. And I spent the evening bonding with my best friend and talking really deeply about philosophical things and uh, the kinds of things that preoccupy the mind of a 15-year-old. But I was impressed by the experience and uh, I definitely decided that um, it had a lot more mystery and opportunity emotionally than other people had been able to describe. I would say that my most memorable MDMA experience was when I was 17. I'd been using it for about a year and a half since I was 15. And um, granted at the time I knew that I wasn't getting the best quality material. I was at a point in my life where I was dealing with a lot of emotional turmoil. I had just come out of uh, an emotionally abusive household. And I was in the middle of um, kind of an acute existential crisis in the middle of high school. I was about to be a young adult and go into a world that I saw a lot of political strife and I was unsure of where my place was gonna be in that and I was dealing with a lot of depression. And um, I just wanted to find a way to get in touch with my most intrinsic self. For a lack of a better way of describing it, it felt as if my mind were a jigsaw puzzle. And this jigsaw puzzle made of my associations and emotions broke apart. And I was left with all of these loose pieces and I knew that the way that it had been um, fit together before was in such a way that I wasn't happy with where I was in my life and I was dealing with that depression. And I knew that the only person who had the power to do anything about it was me. And so being left with all of these loose pieces, I spent most of my experience finding the, the most advantageous way that those pieces could fit back together and give myself permission to be happy again and to really recondition you know, the, the way I operated my life, my mental operating system. Um, and I just from that point forward, I, I took it with me as a life lesson that, you know, should I find myself falling off the path or in a lull of depression, that ultimately I have the power to be compassionate with myself and choose, you know, to push myself in a more positive direction. And so since then, that's been probably the most um, impactful MDMA experience I've had. When it came to, to social gatherings where my friends and I would, you know, take MDMA. It would tend to be a social group of about 10 to 15, and it would be a house setting where we could be in private and sort of tune our own environment, be able to keep good tabs on each other and have a really safe space for that sort of work. And um, we found that anything more than 10 to 15 just got a little too overwhelming with energy, couldn't keep track of everything having continuity in the social group. I think MDMA has vast things to teach humanity about love. Um, I feel that love is often an illusory concept for a lot of people. Um, we're often taught what to think love is and what it isn't. And especially in the MDMA community, people are really confronted with the, uh, the necessity to be able to see what is illusory and what's not when it comes to emotions and love. And like when you're flooded with these chemical feelings of love, how do you find a way to integrate that? How do you know what's real and what's not with your companions, with your lovers, with your family and things like that? But ultimately, I think that love comes from inside us and that's what MDMA teaches us. And so we choose how to project it, who to cultivate it with and that sort of thing. But um, if we really just learn how to listen to our our own intrinsic emotional intelligence. MDMA has a huge portal to that for us into our hearts and how we, how we move in the world and how we choose to invest our compassion in society.